boom, we're live. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the Library of Alexandria. Today, guys, I have once again stepping into the library. We have the <laughs> the the indomitable uh, Richard Swan, the Krogan hating, no remorse <laughs> showing Richard Swan, <laughs> you know, who you know if he what? had to I... shoot Rex twice. I did. And you know what? I was playing, funnily enough, you bring that up because I was playing um, Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition, Mass Effect 2, um, the other day. And I definitely, there was a Krogan mission in that, which I did not realize. Maybe it was a DLC which got added for the Legendary Edition, Okia or something. And I'm pretty sure you don't have to let him die. And I did. He is uh, very much uh, dead. So he's another one bites the dust and in mass effect 3 i'm sure I... you, i'm sure you didn't cure the genophage you just let i him... didn't that's exactly <laughs> what i was about to say <laughs> you are horrible just uh, that's terrible i didn't you know you know what i actually had this kind of weird i had a special option for that because you know how they it pulls through your decisions from all three games yeah. and i had the uh the rare option because that's the modern solace mission isn't it mm -hmm. and i had a rare option where you could I couldn't. I can't remember exactly what it is now, but you basically let the Krogan die in the Genophage, but you also keep like the Geth on side or something like that. I can't remember what it was. It was the kind of weird third option that not many people got. Um, and I think yeah, it's it stems from when you terrible. shoot. No, that's right. Yeah, it yeah. stems from when you shoot Rex and he yes. blows brains out, and then and then and then dump his body in the sewer. Um, <laughs> I didn't even didn't even bury him. I don't even get out of my sight. Like I don't even understand that. Did, did, did you did you use Kaiden? Like, is that who you you your your party member of choice was? Freaking Kaiden? No, I think it was. So I'm a I I I was always uh, Garrus. Uh, Garrus is fine. Garrus is great. Uh, he's my favorite. And then I think I had. Oh well, uh, certainly I had Legion. I think Legion is is Mass Effect two onwards, maybe. Yeah. Um I can't remember. Maybe it was Ashley or Ashley Williams or you know, someone. I don't know. Actually, the, ho the horrific space racist. She's terrible. Is she, oh god, is she? <laughs> Don't say that. Don't say that. This is. This looks like a. This is something like a pattern of behavior now. Look, I didn't know. She, I, used, I didn't know she I was used, racist. I man. Ashley too, and I let. I let. I let Kaiden take the nuke, and I did not care. Mm. I didn't. I. I was like, yeah. you can. You can eat it, Kaiden. I don't care. They can. They can both go. I don't think I used either. As soon as I had other options, they both went. I used. Um, Aliens, I think. Maybe the problem is the human are. characters are lame. Like they're lame. They are lame. They are very lame. Then there's nothing interesting about them at all. No. Um, I think, and I think, I think that's true for all all of the games as well. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't think I use Miranda or, or Jack or anything. Anyone for two or three. No, years well, I, I refuse to use Jack because the games want me to know how edgy she is, and I'm like, get out of yeah. here with this nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> get out of town with that. Seriously. No, she was she was annoying. I um, I think I used Miranda for a few missions, but. Uh, I'm a Garrus Stan, I believe the kids. Uh, I love Garrus, and I love Morden. Anymore. I'm a Morden. I have a stuffed Morden that when you squeeze his hand, he sings um, Scientist Hilarion. Um, Excellent. And like a couple other like science-related songs. It's ridiculous. I love Morden and his <laughs> That's great. Gilbert and Sullivan love. Sort of like periodic table of the elements song. Yes, yes, he sings it, yes. Does he? Yes, Amazing. like literally. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 incredible. Um, so we have yeah, been sorry. talking for like five minutes about Mass Effect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Richard here is about to he's about to drop book two of the yes. Empire of the Wolf, and it's a trilogy, right? It's a trilogy, book two or three. Do you know what book three is called yet? Can you? Uh, I do, but there will. I can't. I can't. It's going to be a reveal. That's um, fair. That's fair. Yeah, yeah. Is it? It was. Just... It's not like the tyranny of kings or. The justice no, of faith. It's the or... justice of kings. Tokyo Drift, obviously. Um... <laughs> it's the third one, so it's gotta be. It's gotta you know, be. Two, two justice, two kings. Justice of kings. Tokyo Drift. Um, it obviously follows the same cadence of the the first two. Um, so it'll be something of something. The something of some things, and uh, I didn't. I didn't choose this title. It was. Um, it was an orbit. Uh, they decided on this one, um, and they said we really like this title. So uh, there it is. And I said. Okay, <laughs> they didn't say what do you think of this title. They said we like. They, no, no, title. they did. No, they did ask me to their credit, and um, and I think if I had really dug my heels in, they would have um, they would have uh, 
not done it to, to okay, but good enough credit. it's good enough but it's fine you know it does it does the job it's got to, it's, so, do you have the good. same do you have the same cover artist as mm -hmm. the first thing? Mm -hmm. yes we do um and it's going to be um oh, i don't think i should say actually it's gonna oh, be very cool you can't tell me who's on the front of this one because we had von uh, vault and now we've got helena helena yeah uh it's going to it's not going to be because so, oh it's difficult to talk about without spoilers yeah, uh don't spoil but yeah i won't spoil uh, it's better if I say nothing, okay. but it definitely won't be who uh, someone you would expect. Let's put it that way. Is it Claver? Is Claver on the cover? That of was the one of the options, actually. You know, yeah. uh, no, it's not Claver. I, um, I, they asked me to sort of put together some ideas of who I thought, and uh, originally we had Von Volt and Helena. So the second book was going to be Von Volt and Helena together, and then Martina did a like a thumbnail sketch of it and the composition just looked really strange gotcha. um it, it wasn't it wasn't good um and so they ditched that and they just put Elena on it and so they were going to do that for book three and i said we will just get amnesia like this we'd had yeah. this for book two and it, it, it didn't work um so they i pitched uh three ideas um and one was one was claver i can't say the other two because they'd be too spoilery gotcha. um and they went with one of the more spoilery ideas okay all right and i well i love the 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 wolf in the background of the first book and then the yes. the weird stag headed thing that when mm. i was reading it i was like this is the thing on the in the background of the book that's the thing in that yeah. yeah that's 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 nema that's the that's the, the sort of all you know one of her kind of you know you know demonic entity jane angelic i should say probably um you know pantheon of, of angel kind of creaturey things because i think because it's obviously a, that's a stag because it's got ha antlers and yeah. whereas nema is a sort of female deer so mm -hmm. it, it couldn't be nema herself but it, it's kind of thematically in keeping with that idea of the sort of the deer-headed gods of of the i was gonna say romans then sovans uh <laughs> slip of the tongue so tyranny of faith is coming out uh what like the 15th 14th of february 14th valentine's 14th? day so valentine's day this, this I mean, it is, this is not a romantic novel. <laughs> but okay, like if you yeah, so, yeah. It's, yeah, it's so good, Richard, and and we'll Thank talk you. like non-spoiler mm. about it right now, and then we'll talk some yeah. spoiler stuff um, okay. later for the people who have who have read it. Um, yes, but man, it is so good, and it's getting it's getting so much heat. I have it's not seen anyone not like it who has read it in advance, like. Many people yeah. are like, well, book of the year, like already. It's so uh, well, good. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's the, the the reaction. So when I, I don't um I don't read reviews. I just sorry, that's not true. I read five star reviews um for the Justice of Kings. I, I and but very infrequently these days because it's all it's all a bit old hat now. It's been yeah. out for nearly <laughs> a year. So it's whatever. Um, so uh, those are great. But I don't. Um, but with Tyranny of Faith, I have because you know it's a new book. It's all very exciting. Um, I have been reading all of the reviews, and I think one of the I don't go on net galley as a general rule of thumb because the reviews on there tend to be very mixed, as a, as a sort of much more so than Goodreads. I think yeah. for some bizarre reason. Um, but some of the early reviews that came in, like on net galley and um, goodreads were actually pretty equivocal like you know they were kind of like three stars i think one was like i absolutely hated this book like i hated what he did with the sort of the characters you know insert character here no why did you do this kind of thing yeah and i was like oh god have i i've written a really divisive novel you know some people are gonna I really hate this and um so i was genuinely very worried about it for a little while because obviously you know our career as authors are yeah. kind of dependent on reception of novels um and then you know a week later it's just been five 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 you know um and, and so that's it's been good been wonderful. and and, and i do i do get it like people need to, this this book is is different in scope it is it not is. like it's not just a new mystery mm. with von vault and helena like no you know investigating a new like that's it's, that's not what it is so if people are going no. and expecting it to be justice of kings like episode two you two know justice, a, two kings yeah yeah, yeah, exactly. In a, in a, <laughs> to keep with the, the, uh, are you a huge, like, fast and <laughs> No, no. <laughs> no. Just work the word family a lot into the third book. Family. Um, and add a Vin Diesel character. Who I watches even... someone watching someone watching a funeral. So. Yeah, I haven't even seen, I've seen the first 
Well, I'm not even sure I've seen any of them except the first one, actually. Um, it, but anyway, no, they get more they, and more ludicrous. There is a, I know, there is a miss. So you're absolutely right. There, it's diff The scope expands dramatically. But what I did want to do was keep a mystery in there. Yes, um, and it's so good. I love the mystery in this one. <laughs> the abduction of the Prince Camille. Yeah, and so I, I, it was. Um, I was like, I've got to whatever I do because that's the kind of the USP, if you like, of of the Empire of the Wolf series is the kind of investigative aspect of it. So mm. I wanted to have a a crime that had to be solved, and the trick was work of finding a way to work that into the tapestry of the broader imperial malaise um you know that was being orchestrated by you know sort of clavor in the background um and so that uh yeah so it was important to me that we kept some investigative you know aspect in to kind of keep the wheels spinning and keep the sort of pe you know people pages turning but as i say weaving that into the kind of the broader you know because i think in the first one there's the there's the murder mystery which again is part of the broader conspiracy mm. but it you know you don't really know that until the very end um Whereas this one, you know, Von Volt immediately suspects it's part of a broader orchestration by Claver. He just yeah. sort of can't prove it. Um, so that was. Sort yeah, of he sounds like about. a, like everyone else thinks he's a madman, like that he's mm, obsessed mm. with this little backwards priest. That, yes, uh, exactly that. Yeah. It's, a, it's, an, it's an allegory, Alan. It's, um, you know, it's, it's an allegory of how, you know, these sort of fringe lunatics, um, if you leave them alone for long enough, they they sort of they insidiously sort of build up their oh i have base. many i have many notes like this thing <laughs> like so like like justice and like demagoguery and like like people not see, believing things that's like right in front of their face yeah it's all like right. very mm. i don't know like i talk about it in my classes all the time because again nothing's changed mm. like politics is the same as, as it was two thousand years ago like exactly right that. after i read this book mm. i read Ethereum. um Oh, the, first, okay. the first the Cicero trilogy yeah, and yeah. it's the same crap like like freaking mm -hmm. like politicians you know, feathering their own nests that's right yeah like and and you know Varus is a public menace and you yes know, and Cicero is like hey guys 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 what if you know and mm. book two is Catiline we know how that shakes out and yeah not like it's just it I, know you, I know you mean I tried to capture some of that people. in my um so you know when they're going to visit the Senate, for example, I I suppose some of it's a bit kind of um, a bit obvious, you know, in terms of this of allegorical, you know, what I'm drawing on. But um, yeah. you know, that's what I wanted. Those are the themes I wanted to explore. You know, I, it was I was venting my spleen at um, the state of you know the sort of the modern political landscape in many ways, yeah. and I think that sort of comes through. You know, the characters' dialogue. Yeah, and I and again, like my my review will go closer to the 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 time of the um of release, but like like mm. the like the 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 disdain that von Vault has uh, <laughs> and his his faction in the Senate for the the kind of like pop the populist movement that exactly, yeah. is just spouting like stuff that isn't true. They yes. know it isn't true, but it's like, and again, politics hasn't changed for 2000 years. Demosthenes, the, ancient, yeah, the, yeah. Yeah, the Athenian orator Demosthenes did the mm. same thing against Philip of Macedon. He right. just says he, and he literally acknowledges mm. like that. He said, he just repeated lies about Philip long enough yeah. and loud enough to where everyone just believed him. That's and what happens. Like yeah, yeah. that's what these demagogues. The problem is, is now modern demagogues are so dumb they don't know what the word demagogue means. But they're no. demagogues; they're just fools. But there's, but, but there's a receptive public, you know, to them though. That's the most troubling aspect of it, I think. It yes, like it's just so, it's just so fascinating because you know it you is. look at ancient Rome and ancient and ancient mm. Greece, and you're trying to do what is like you want to do what's good for people like for the populace yes. but then it ta gets taken too far and you whip yes. up the mob and the rabble like, and then um, and, and now it's insanity yeah was it caius marius who was um was his land reforms um was it caius marius who tried to introduce the sort of land reforms in rome that, that's um, gracchus tiberius gracchus tiberius gracchus yeah and and um, was murdered for his trouble yes yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh my, anyway, that's a separate conversation. Well, but, Marius, um, Marius reformed the military and allowed, like, poor he, people... Non-landowners to, non to join the soldiery. Because yeah. finally the government's providing the equipment instead of um, yes. the individuals purchasing their own. Yeah, yeah, 
I um, love that. So, and I know that you're a big fan of administration and logistics in your fantastical works. Um, yes. I, <laughs> I do love that. And a friend of mine actually, in there's a part in book three of the Empire of the Wolf where there's a big battle, and a friend of mine was talking talking about how um, that in the ancient world they used to mix ox blood in with the mortar to strengthen it. Um, you know, when they were building their walls, and I was like, "That's got to go in." I love that. Done. You know, it's so just you know slaying the ox, get the blood in the mortar, mixing it all together, and so on. I just thought, just little bits like that, you know, and this idea of you know all the sort of the stone masons coming out of the you know the woodwork, if you'll excuse the pun, and kind of preparing yeah. the walls, and all this kind of often overlooked aspects of you know warfare, of you just the repairing, the sharpening of the blades, the filling up of the pots, you know, digging the latrines, and all this sort of thing. Um, so in book two, uh, in book two, Tyranny of Faith, I think like uh, it's the first um, they kind of catch up with one of the legions in the kind of the first chapter or something, and they're like just this overwhelming smell where they've just because you know, if you think about if a, if a legion is what five thousand men or so, mm -hmm. every one of them is going to the you know, toilet first thing in the morning or whatever. That's literally a ton of you know fecal matter, probably more than that. Um, and so you so sort of, where is this all the stuff going? You know, what are they mm -hmm. eating? And so they're kind of picking the farms clean and so they drive yeah. past not drive, but they drive a wagon past a mm -hmm. farm and there's all the crops have gone and all the farms have been ransacked and stuff. And that's just a, that's a friendly legion. That's not even like an I love it. kind of like I mm. I love it. I'm teaching like I'm teaching Alexander currently in my class and oh, fantastic. I'm, and I'm just like guys Darius can't stay here. He's got a mm. hundred and twenty thousand men. Mm. How's he feeding them? And can yeah, you yeah. imagine how much poop that is? Can, like y'all have never thought about that. I know you haven't, <laughs> kids. Can you imagine how much poop that is? You can't. Yeah. Like no, it's and it's not even. I mean, I remember there's a brilliant book called Ashen Court by Juliet Barker, which is obviously about the Ashen Court campaign. Um, and it was talking about how uh, Henry V basically had to move the English army across the channel it's like 20 25 26 miles of water it's really not that far you can see on a clear day you can see france from the south coast of england yeah um and it was like she spends a chapter going through the economics of it and how much money he had to spend and he had to buy basically every ship going you know from the dutch and you know europe Absolutely. Just hundreds of like ships. I guess all these lords had all their horse. They had like five horses each, and you got the food and the baggage of the horse, and they got to get them all on the boats, and then they all get across, and then like half of them die from dysentery or something. Anyway, um, and it's I love that. That was my favorite chapter in the whole book. I was it was fast fascinating, and they basically just bankrupted the, the royal exchequer, just kind of you know funding oh, this campaign. I love that stuff. Like, everyone, love so anyone tuning in, you're getting like the other interviews that Richard does. We'll talk more about the book. I promise. Oh, by the way, yeah, right. We're talking about into... the stuff that goes into the book. The nuts and bolts. I when I've been planning. So yeah, I think you know this, but um, my sort of third book, uh, sort of trilogy that I'm kind of writing at the moment which follows on from empire of the wolf but it's set two centuries later so we're kind of very much in the gunpowder age now um and we get a, and we I, get a whiff of that in 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 this book where they talk that's about right on the frontier there's there's like little bits of black powder being used that's right yeah and it's all kind of imported at that stage um because they don't know how to make it um and that's where the kind of the casimir and you know people the cobra Co coalition they have this kind of yeah supply chain of black powder um but you're very much the gunpowder age and um, one of my favorite things i did recently was i kind of evolved the, the map of the um the landscape and everything and i sort of was putting in like sort of got um iron ore now you know the iron ore and coal and um you know these kind of things that sort of the, drive the furnaces of industry and so they've they've got like kind of canal systems and um nice. you know because they need to kind of get the coal and the iron ore back to the kind of smelters and stuff and because it's a fantastic there's a um i think it might have been dan carlin's hardcore history when he's talking about kind of roman mines and these kind of just horrible kind of smoggy landscapes of you know, mining activity and obviously you know and all this kind of polluted air and the smell and whatever the minerals they were digging up i don't think it was coal but maybe it was um and uh you know so i wanted to sort of capture and but the logistics of all of it as well so you've got to shift all this stuff and you've got to ship it and pack it up and thinking about how the kind of the, the borders would um expand that would they follow natural contours would they follow kind of political contours and you know it's it's very kind of i've got a lot i've got a lot of detail i've probably got too much detail now no, um, no there's, kind of, thing. <laughs> there's like you know there's, there's sort of proxy wars happening and it's what i what, what i've done with it is is i've like i love the um 
what we would call the Seven Years' War. I think you call it the French and Indian War. Um, we do. Yeah, and I I love that um, part of history. It's fascinating, just you know, sort of early colonialism um, and uh, the way that they conducted those campaigns when, with, and the technology of the time. So I'm sort of capturing that. So very last mm -hmm. Mohicans, I'm sort of capturing that. Yeah. Um, in this um, in this trilogy, and it's I've been led very heavily into the administrative aspect of it um, quite early on. Richard, I have been waiting. Like I am waiting. For a seminal, <laughs> a seminal work of mm. of Flintlock fantasy to like blow up because they've, I mean, they're so the two most popular out Flintlock there. series mm. are Powder Mage and then uh, the Shadow Campaigns um, by Django Wexler, right. which the right. Thousand Names is basically Napoleon's Egypt campaign, but okay. with with demons and it's excellent. Um, Sounds excellent. And Powder Mage is basically the French Revolution, um, and yes. like it's it's not my favorite, but at least mm. it had it like it uh, basically gives you know um, it draws it's got a cool, to sort of magic Lock. system, doesn't it? I think I've I've read the first one. Um, yeah, I've many, I've also only read um, Promise of Blood. Yeah. Um, yes, but man, you got like you got to like come out and l let it go huge. Let it be the like. Oh, the biggest, I think this my that's my favorite subgenre of fantasy. Is, I think the world like, is I think the world is ready. For the, I think for so the, too. The seminal flintlock fantasy. What I sure. the hook of this novel, I really I really like it. It's basically um a dip, so a diplomat. She kind of she's a she's a secretary to the ambassador, and they kind of exist in the sort of the basement of the colonial office, and um, you've got these kind of like you know very important things happening. There's a proxy war and the kind of Kazakh ERI, the way the wolf men are, and they're kind of two sides arming that conflict, and that's all kind of powder weapons and horrible stuff. And there's all these kind of pagans and stuff. It's all kind of the world is much more developed. But they are the ambassadors to the um the, the mermen, you know, the, and I was like, and no one's yeah. no one gives a shit about them. You know, they don't they don't produce anything, they're not with trading partners, they they're they're underwater. Like, what can they yeah, do? yeah, right. <laughs> they they you know they might um they so one they used whalebone. I I don't I learned this from a book called Into the Georgian London, Into the Streets. This is a fantastic book by Lucy Inglis, um, about Georgian London, funnily enough. And it um, talked about how women in their corsets had, um, they used whalebone stays mm -hmm. to sort of make them rigid. And so I thought, how like, what an excellent little detail, um, you know, so you could have the mermen, obviously they want to protect the whales and you've got these kind of whalers who want to kill the whales for the oil and the meat and this, the whalebone for the, among other things, to kind of the stays in the women's corsets. And so there's got these allusions to kind of a guy with a musket just kind of battering this merman's yes. skull in, trying to get the kind of the oyster pearl or the whale bone or whatever it is. Um, but, you know, even, and I think mermen, you know, it's a bit of a sort of, it's a bit of a joke in fantasy, you know, no one really takes it seriously. I think yeah. we are overdue a serious examination of quite, quite a grim sea-based, you know, race. And um, and so they are the ambassadors to these, these mermen. And, um, you know, in the, in the opening sort of chapters of the novel, it's, there's a message that comes in. Oh my God! You know, Renata, you must come quickly. It's you know, it's an urgent message from the Merman ambassador. And she's like, oh, and she sort of runs to this park, and basically, the group of guys from the colonial office have like a dead fish, and they're like, he's, you know, it's the Merman ambassador. You know, you need to. And they're it's a prank, and they all kind of laugh. And one of them kind of produces this mollusk, and he's like, I think he's pulled a muscle. You know, um, no. <laughs> <it's>... <laughs> No, and so this is right. So there was right after, and she's like, "Oh, you know, screw you guys. Like, you know, I, I don't need this shit." And so, and so they're very hyper aware of. It's almost like a bit meta, a bit self-referential. Gotcha. But then, of course, at the end of the chapter, an actual urgent missive from the imperial court comes in, and so the whole idea is that this tiny, insignificant office in the colonial administration has become the focal point because of you know the, the moment have a pivotal role in whatever it is. That's awesome. Um, so I think it's I think it's going to be really cool, and I think it's um, you know I'm hoping to sell that to Orbit this year. Started writing it so that we have some material to show them. Um, and we have, well, hopefully, we have Tyranny of Faith will blow up oh, yeah, enough the, to the where they're like, hey, about. yeah, give us another one. <laughs> I think so. I mean, you know, the, the, I think the pre-orders have been good, and the sales figures are good. You know, with all these things, it's kind of it's about the draw through, isn't it? So, yeah. you know, Justice of Kings has sold very well. Um, but uh, you know, and you always sequels. lose people on a sequel because you not always everyone do on the second one. Yeah, exactly. And you can lose. It's like you know, at least twenty five percent per yeah. book, probably probably more. So, but it, I mean, it's infinitely readable. I love Helena's voice. Um, Thank you. I, I love I love the, the the framed narrative. You know, she's she's telling mm. it from she's an old lady telling it 
as the as she remembers it um Mm. the 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 uh the the good thing is that there's no (laughs) for some people who had an issue with helena's like dalliance with the the teenage guard guy or whatever yeah. people are like uh, romance well okay she, so there's no teenage guard guy in this one so y'all yeah like but, but i'm down. gonna write him back in <laughs> you should resurrect him <laughs> so people can deal with it he's a zombie but, but i love the fact that so justice kings takes place in we're basically mm-hmm. in the, like the the backwoods the frontier yeah, whatever yeah. but right. here it's very very urban and i okay, love so, yeah. i love sova like you have Thank made you. it so like w- like brought it to life like it feels oh, huge it helps that mm. we're in helena's um shoes yes. where she's just yeah, like yeah. in awe of the scope of it yeah, but yeah. like the chapters where we're venturing down into i forget what what you call them but like where the the like the tanner is and yes yeah and yeah. the, the book- antisocial trades district whatever it is yeah. yes and it's just like you can you can because you know mm. we play we play video games and like oh yes, look yeah, at this yeah, sure. and you look at this quaint village and and oh look at the tanner where i can buy leather goods <laughs> yeah they use pee in that so yeah yeah like and feces yeah exactly Shit. this is and, our children's channel yeah so when i um and also i've been playing like i've been playing the witcher 3 like update so Lovely if game. i call radomir radovid that is why i've been playing witcher 3 again <laughs> Um, I didn't take Radomir from Radovid. I had a, I have a name generator I use for slight, you know, all of the names. But yeah, so sure. That wasn't. I didn't lift. That. No, no. I just, I just like keep slipping up because I'm literally, I'm literally like dealing with you know the Radovid quest line. Of course, <laughs> I'm still on the Bloody Baron on my on my playthrough. I've only just got into that, so um, that's a, again another such a good quest line though. Like such love, a good love, quest I love, line. I love all, honestly, it's so yeah. good. It's so mm. good. Um, game I've ever played. Yeah, I absolutely fantastic. But mm. so I love I love Sova and I love um how just and everything just feels this close to going off the rails. Like the mm. emperor, like I message you, I'm like, what is this guy doing? This is the worst <laughs> emperor like ever. Like, yeah. why is he so dumb? But he's it's... not, and you described it as, you know. It's it's a yeah, it's a mixture of different things, isn't it? And I think um you know, one of the things I wanted to get, because I think yours will be quite a common reaction, and it's a sort of reaction that people have when they watch you know, a lot of movies and things like that, when they're like, oh my god, why they don't, especially horror movies, and they're like, oh, yeah. just go and, you know, do this or whatever. And I wanted to sort of capture the idea that, you know, Sova is this just, it's it's this enormous kind of fortified city. Um, and, you know, the sort of the capital of essentially the known world. Um, it's a real melting pot of kind of cultures. And, um, the idea that this kind of like and oh god you know we get a dozen of these kind of mad men every year he's just another one and he's all the way down in sort of the frontier we don't care about this at all um and in fact i've got much more pressing issues to kind of deal with here in the capital i'm not about to kind of you know launch you know crusade south to kind of take care of this guy and so this is kind of like personal you know indifference to sort of claver on the on the part of the emperor plus a kind of like don't you sort of charge into the capital and start telling me my business. You know, I know how to run things here. Yeah, um, yeah we've got a dozen issues we need to kind of solve before we even think about Clavey, you know, Hill Key. Um, and so it, it's this idea of kind of bureaucratic indifference and yeah. inertia to, um, you know, well, you know, threats that, you know, for many people, and I think I sort of say this with Helena a few times, you know, it's, it doesn't, you know, when you're in the camera, you don't, it doesn't feel like it's a problem. It's, you know, it feels like it's very far away. You know, it feels like a problem because we're kind of really wrapped up in it and we know, we know how dangerous Claver is, but it's, you know, trying, just trying to convince someone on the street that this guy you've never heard of is, is threatening the entire world order. No one's buying it. Um, and so I kind of wanted to kind of sort of capture that, I guess it's sort of dramatic irony in a way. Um, but I think you're, you know, I think you're right. I think some people will sort of read that and think, oh, well, you know, it's ridiculous. You know, the emperor would just go and kill him or something. But I don't well, think that's. Well, I think, I mean, I think y- right. you describe it like I wrote it down. The metaphor mm-hmm. of he is the emperor is tangled in rose brambles, like he's tangled in a rose bush. That's, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. And, and he's he got to just... figure out which, like, that's which it. things to clip and in which order <laughs> so that he doesn't like bleed to death. That's right. Oh, well, good on you for remembering that. That's I love that you remembered that. 
Um, well, I mean, that, then it made like that explains everything mm. that you're like, what is his problem? Here's yes. his problem. He's yes. got I because can't there's just... so much in the city that's all that mm. like, people plotting against him. Like any one of which is a major problem. Exactly. So he is he I mean, he is he's like like being he's caught. And if he moves the wrong way too fast, mm. blood, blood out. Exactly. Exactly yeah. that. Yeah. It's exactly that, and I think um, I think I've, I've because you what you do want to do is write defensively. There's a great um, there's a resource that I when I was getting into writing in a serious way and kind of like my young teens, um, well, a bit later actually. I probably found it when I was about eighteen or nineteen. It's called the Turkey City Lexicon, and it's a um, it's a science fiction writers of America um, resource, and they have it's one of their articles. I recommend everybody look it up, um, and it's kind of like a list of maybe fifty common pitfalls um for, for writers and they each have like these quaint little names and they're really cool um called? and it, it's called the turkey city lexicon nice. um and it's a absolutely fun, it's a, one of two resources that i I've, I've never read any books on writing or anything like that but yeah this article i think was probably one of the very few resources that have been really helpful for me as a writer and the, the craft of writing call um, a rabbit a smirp exactly that you found it <laughs> yeah, yeah false exoticism um and one of them is called something like you can't fire me i quit and it's basically like um oh gotcha it's like it is. you can't fire me i quit yeah go and read it out what have you got the, read it out there an attempt to diffuse the reader's incredulity with a preemptive strike as if by anticipating the reader's objections the author has somehow answered them i would never have believed it if i hadn't seen it myself it was one exactly of those amazing that. coincidences that can only take place in real life. <laughs> it's a one in a million chance, but it's so crazy it just might work. Surprisingly common, especially in science fiction. So this is exactly that. So it's the idea that you think, oh, no one's going to buy this. So I better preemptively explain what, why this ostensibly ridiculous situation has been allowed to develop. And I was at pains to sort of have the characters explain you know just why it was the emperor was like yeah you're absolutely right here's a thousand men go and kill him now um because on on the face of it it seems like that's not only the natural and obvious thing to sort of do but also something that's perfectly possible and this is where your logistics come in again of course because mm. actually scraping together a thousand you know men is very difficult you know especially no if one thinks about that there is no famous no one almost no fantasy no books talk about how like you have to first you, you got you got you have to get like muster them then you mm. have to arm them then yep. you have like a thousand men think about how much a thousand people eat in a day yeah, yeah. like yeah. you've got you've got to have, find a way to supply them they can't carry all of their equipment on their back like no. for a, a, camp, a campaign especially not a levy you know like heavy infantry maybe like you know some your Spartans or your Romans or whatever, but certainly yeah. not a, a levy. So I, I, I exactly that, and I, you know, and so when I was writing the trilogy, what I what I was at pains to do was keep the numbers low um, in all of the army. So I think if the Empire of the Wolf is, you know, I mean, it is tens of millions of people, um, but I, you know, I think the um, the the whole, you know, in theory, the whole Imperial legions are something like three hundred thousand men. That's if the entire empire. That's the kind of that's 350,000 men and almost all of them. And that's, you know, not just soldiers. That's yeah. all. You Most kind are of, tied up in the frontier, aren't they? Exactly. The frontier and the kind of along the Kova yeah. um, fighting the kind of the Kova Confederation. So the sort of the Templars are down in the frontier and they're kind of like semi elite. We don't really care too much about them. They can just kind of do what, their own thing. We're kind of more interested in, you know, the, the fighting along the Kova Confederation. So almost all of the legions are there. You know, slowly dying in in mm -hmm. the sort of the sand there. So, you know, the idea of well, I can't just snap my fingers and generate an army of a thousand men. I can't I, even a hundred men. It's not you know, it's not straightforward. And you're right, you've got to arm your arm them. You've got to provision them. Um, you've got to march them south. They've got to be in good fighting order when they arrive. Um, and uh, and so it was just, it not only just sort of logistical. I like, you know, it wasn't just a kind of well, even if I even if I could do this, even mm -hmm. if I had the will which i don't because i've got a dozen other things to take care of but even if i could i can't just snap my fingers and generate legion out of thin air i've got about two fronts i need to kind of watch and garrison and all the rest of it so i was i was at pains in the um in this as I say, in the series to kind of keep the numbers out so even like the really really big battles are like 10 15 000 
you know men on on a side that's that's um, more the that's more the 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 greek uh the ancient greek mm -hmm. battles as opposed to the romans where it's like you know 120,000 yeah, in the canai or something yeah. losing 80,000 <laughs> in an afternoon yeah. oh my god and then I a month later miserable. just fill, filling it up again like it's insanity yeah. insane oh it is it is and if you look at i think i talked about this last time we spoke back into logistics but it was this um it was a kind of how big an army could you create from a, a given population it was like you know, you've got say you've got 20 million people like sort of the height of medieval france mm -hmm. or something and then you see you take out all of the, the women and the, the old and the people who are crippled and the ill and the sick and the people you need to garrison your existing fortresses you know and mm -hmm. all the rest of it and, and suddenly there's just the numbers just keep getting smaller oh and by the way no one can fight in, in the summer because we need everybody to or maybe no one can find the winter, you know, the harvest time, whatever it is. Yeah. So we only really have about three months of the year we can actually kind of mount a campaign. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I did try and sort of add, I mean, I wasn't like, a, the book isn't full of, as you know, it's not full of reams of logistical. Yeah, text. it's not. No one like, no, no. <laughs> most people watching this have read the book already. So yeah, yeah, this is all background. This is all background stuff. But yeah. I, but I did try and keep, I did try and add a sort of flavor of, you know, realism to the, the fighting aspects of it. Because, um. For sure. I do like that. Well, I also like that the fact that like all like the way the first book makes it seem is that all of the Templars are they're all like terrible, they're all claver stands, mm. you know, yeah. but they're not. Like no, they're cool. We see yeah, that Claver yeah. does not have complete control over all of the Templars. No, that's right. I was because it would have been so easy, and you know it would have been very easy to make this sort of this hegemonic kind of block yeah. of Sort of, you know, I, I, what I wanted to do the Templars was have them a, as a mix of kind of, um, I Templars. It's, it's, it's quite problematic, isn't it? Because obviously, like, if you think about the original Templars in real life, and obviously they went to the, you know, the Crusades and killing all the Muslims and all the rest of it, it's obviously a very bad thing to have done, but a fascinating part of history. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I wanted to kind of capture that a lot of the Templars were religious, but for a lot of them it was a good opportunity to get some fighting experience um and especially for like the commanders as well so a lot of them are kind of political appointees um or they kind of much like you know sea guard up in the north of um Haunersheim, where, which routinely sees fighting against the pagans there um you know people would want to do that but like lords especially would really would want to get the experience in the fighting and the, and the experience of commanding men and so a lot of people kind of there's a lot of jostling for positions in like you know Sudenberg and Kerak and um and Zetland these sort of Templar fortresses because they fight you know daily you know so there's mm -hmm. good experience to be had there so I wanted to make it kind of a, a mixture of actual God-fearing you know or Nema fearing um Templars who are doing it because they believe that killing the pagans there is the right thing to do, um, but also you know factions of more not that um, you know <laughs> factions of people who are kind of more interested in um, in just in just fighting. And I think there's a section in the first book where I talk about the sort of the three different types of people who want to go to the frontier, and one of them is people who just want to commit murder, but don't want to go to prison for it yeah. um and so you've got and it's a mix but you're right and so i i like to kind of i like to make everything factionalized i like to you know i don't like in a lot of fantasy books um not to you know criticize anybody particularly but i think you end up with these quite hegemonic um blocks the, the good guys and the bad guys and and if, and it's, it's Fantasy TV definitely falls into that problem yeah, as well. Where groups of people are a monolith, like they're exactly monolithic is the word I was looking for. Thank yeah. you. And um, and actually, I wanted to think, okay, well, you've got the Templars, but with it, there's there are different orders of Templars, mm -hmm. you know, for, first and foremost, and they have their own rivalry. So Zet, so Claver only really has like one order of Templars on his side. He doesn't even have all of them, as you say. Yeah. So one of the first things he needs to do is kill all the other Templars in the way yeah. um, because they're the first kind of big obstacle for him. Yeah. So we're going to, we're just going to talk like, so if y'all haven't read the book, go read it. Cause we're going to talk spoilers. Cause we can't really discuss like a lot of the stuff no. in depth without spoilers. So y'all have been <laughs> warned because there's so much I want to talk about. Not the least mm. of which is I love the, growth like i love the relationship between um bresinger uh radomir and mm. helena. helena like yeah we see because von Volt is off doing doing his job or whatever like he's busy man stuck sitting there a lot yeah and i love their relationship that they're like Thank like you. budding friendship it's really mm. really good and radomir 
who in like Radomir is he's like the back he's like your friend from the from the sticks that yeah. you've brought into polite society <laughs> and it's just like like why the f are we doing that like it's no right. yeah, like, yeah that sucks he's and a straight like, man Radimir, mm. stop we're in public yeah, yeah. <laughs> for god's sake i i i liked it was difficult because i initially i um so in very early drafts of justice of kings wrestling had died at the end of the justice of kings um and uh it, it, oh it, instead it, of like, instead of like he succumbed to his arm loss instead of no 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 uh, he he uh, they, a guy a bunch of dudes burst into the uh courtroom and one of them shoots him with a crossbow i mean it was i think margaret westenholz does it he gets us you know kill him or something as to make an example of his power it, it obviously it changed entirely in the in the in the rewrite in the redrafting but originally resting a dime um and then i didn't want to do that uh, i changed that um because i liked the character of resting it so i kept him um but the difficulty with having so so von Volt takes her out of here because resting obviously loses his arm at the end of book one and he's sort of he's out of action for at least you know two or three weeks and so von Volt needs another you know he's a pragmatic man he's like well, like as much as i love pressing i can't rely on him to do as much as he could anymore so i need a second dude you know um so he sort of recruits sir adamir the as a writer the difficulty i had with that was wrestling and sir adamir fulfill very similar roles with yes. the narrative um and it was initially the sort of the first editorial notes i got back on book two were um you need to develop I think it was Sir Randomir, or maybe it was Bressing. So one of these characters is just a passenger in the whole narrative. You need to kind of rethink this. Um, and, and I and that was a problem. And so I had to think of a way of making the two men different enough um, that they were Karen Cat. Because there's, you know, there's a scope for people to confuse the two of them because they are quite similar. Um, so to make them different enough, and and you know, so have them that have this kind of like. I thought Bressig would naturally be jealous of Sir Adamir because you know he's, he's always been him and Von Volta. Now this kind of new guys come in, so and they've kind of got a bit arms. of arms, and he's got two arms, so they've got a bit of a kind of love hate, you know. Right? I think they kind of respect each other, and they definitely are friends. But there's that kind of tension there as well, and I kind of wanted to explore that. And obviously, Helena is stuck in the middle, and she's trying to kind of mediate between the two of them. Yeah. And so when they all get drunk, obviously they start fighting, and she's like, you know, for God's sake, stop it! And I did really enjoy writing the, th the three of them. And I think that comes through the narrative. Oh, I think it's, one of really, my it's really good. And I, and I, I, you know, I was worried too, like, are they going to be mm. like, seem the same, but mm. they're like, they're not, they're very different. Like yes, Radomir so, is yeah. so out of his depth in this city, <laughs> but he is, yes. I mean, he's a natural investigator. Like his instincts mm. are good. He's That's just, it. he like, when they go out into the field, like Radomir, like, what are you doing, man? Like he, it's a small town sheriff. Away kill the yeah, does, exactly. yeah exactly yeah exactly like he's a not a man. warrior he's a sheriff no, he's a sheriff he's yeah. just yeah i i love that he, that's exactly right he's just out of his depth and i but he was to one of my sure... favorite characters by the end like by at no, by the end it. like mm. radomir had like he is he's one of my mm. favorite characters now he's one like, of my favorite great. characters yeah, yeah yeah i i really like him and i i think he's you know when you just want someone to there's a, you know i think there's a bit when he's just like what the fuck just happened? You know, yeah. I think it's a bit when they sort of first kind of have that experience with the sub me frog, that kind of demonic entity, and he's just standing in Helena and he's like, What the fuck was that? You know, yeah. And so and he's he's as I say, he's like, you know how in comedy you have the straight man, you know, the guy who's just the kind of like, the very kind of po faced. Yeah. You know? uh, and he's that, you know, he's he's there to kind of highlight the absurdity of a lot of you know the narrative and and sort of we just be like what, what is going on here yeah. like, you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, why, don't, why don't we just kill him you know yeah. um so the interplay between those characters i think was um came out very nicely by the end of the the novel yeah and him and him and helena's friendship is really like its development yes. is really really good um I, I, do, I, I do i do like that dynamic and i think um well, there were three characters now, <laughs> three older men, and then Helena. So uh, that character, that dynamic has been done. I don't, I don't think I need to explore that dynamic in any more books. Yeah. But um, they, they each have a slightly different relationship, don't they? And I think obviously Helena's relationship with Von Volk goes down a kind of certain one certain way, and mm -hmm. she's sort of like a brother with sort of Bressinger and, and Radom is almost like a sort of drunk old uncle who's kind of says yes. off colour jokes, you know? <laughs> yeah, but I, I love the discussion with with him about she's like why do you drink so much dude like yes yeah, yeah. He's like like i know like i know i know i drink oh, too much yeah 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 it's, i liked that i thought it was it was 
it was poignant. And I also like Serrano because sometimes he just, because he's such a simple man, his mind will just cut through things quite quickly. So like, mm. I think there's a couple of times when he's just like, well, what, you know, what about this? And, it, and yeah. it's the answer, you know, it's mm-hmm. the answer to the question, but they've all been kind of turning the kind of legal minds to it, trying to kind of agonizing over these problems. He's like, well, why don't we just do this? And they're like, oh yeah, actually that is the right thing to do. And so, yeah. He was a great character to write, yeah. And huge spoilers, guys. So if you're still here, still huge spoilers. When you kill Bresinger, yes. <laughs> oh man, I, know. I mean that whole se- that whole segment is just like it's incredible. Done. And and we got to get back there because I got to, to in order to talk about that, we got to go back to, um, f- first of all, first of mm. all, we haven't mm. talked about Von Vault at all. Von no. Vault's <laughs> like. Von Vault is so hyper focused on Claver, like yes, to the point of it's as if anything, everything he's ever said and taught Helena, which I mean, mm. she thinks this in the book. Like, mm. did any of it mean anything? Like, yes. I have so much written down about, mm. like, is it justice if the laws do not apply equally to mm. everyone, even right. the people who mm. know the law and are going to abuse it and take advantage of it? And, exactly you know, and Von Vault, like, loses his mind. He's like, mm. so I'm going to let this guy sit, like, this mm. guy who's clearly guilty of these horrible crimes. I'm going to let him yes, sit exactly. there, get an attorney, like, mm. and probably, you know, and he's going to go yeah. in there and he's going to spread all of this dangerous rhetoric. Like, exactly that. Mm. and he's like, I can yeah. kill him. And they're yeah. like, yeah. you." And this was the, this was the, like, mind-blowing part where it's mm. like, Helena's like, yeah, you can. But like, like you, you should not. And maybe it's not this guy. It's one of the later guys. It's the someone where he's like, I can yeah, kill yeah. this guy for this. And they're like, yeah, yeah. but should you? Yes. And he's like, well, the law says I can. That is literally the mirror of mm. what he doesn't do in yes. real in the first chapter of the first exactly. book. Yeah, and that's yeah. why Claver's pissed at him. <laughs> because he doesn't kill the pagans because the yes. law says he doesn't have to. Exactly that. I... It's. I'm, I'm. I'm. Thank you for sort of grappling with with the text in such a sort of deep and, and meaningful way. It, wow. It's. Um. I. You're, the bit you're referring to is in Rakeberg when they. Um. They have the. He needs a corpse, to send Helena oh, to the yeah. afterlife, and uh, she's like, you, you can't just kill this guy because you need a corpse to send me down to the afterlife, and he's like, well, I, I, I mean, can. So I says I can't. You know, he's a deserter, so I can kill him, and she's like, yes, but sh- you know, but should you? Yeah. And that's the kind of you know the, the question, and I think. Um, it's you know it's a question for our age, and I I think I said it either to you or in other interviews. I think um, in my teens there was you know the war and terror was kind of really happening in earnest, and I think Iraq. Yeah, we talked about this and, last time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and so I, I this sort of in, and and you had you know, secret in the UK at least or England I should say um, you had they they introduced an entirely new procedure for dealing with terrorism cases, and it all happened in secret. So um, you know these hearings would happen behind closed doors with sort of special advocates um, mm-hmm. and the uh, the accused were not allowed to hear a lot of the evidence against them um, because it was sealed um, and a lot of it was what we call intelligence-based mm-hmm. uh, policing and trials rather than evidence-based you know yeah. policing and trials and so it and those violated basically every you know sort of tenet of, of the common law that, that hitherto mm-hmm. existed um, and it's like but you can't but it's often there isn't, you know, evidence in a, in a strict sense. Um, you know, often there, you know, mm-hmm. it doesn't. Uh, and so I'm not saying either way is right or wrong, but it's, you know, how do you as a democratic, sort of liberal democratic society with a secular corpus of law, what happens when someone who will gleefully ignore or violate those rules in, in such a way that, you know, they start to run rings around you because you are hobbled by procedural yeah. Know, propriety um how do you counter that threat you know if someone that you know is evil and is, is doing bad things it's i, mean, I like I, I think i, I think we've still got this last time as well it's like the bit in austin powers is perfect he's dr evil has austin powers and he's like i'm gonna do this you know, i'm gonna dip him into a vat full of mutated herring yeah and scott says why don't you just shoot him you know what <laughs> Why don't you just get i'll get a gun right now we can do it right now we'll just shoot him and it's this idea of why don't you just do it you know and um and the whole you know the, the idea is well because that takes us back 
you know, millennium of yeah. civilization and development. Um, and uh, so it is frustrating, you know, it's frustrating. And, mm -hmm. and even we as kind of sort of hand wringing kind of liberal leftists, you know, something yeah. that we grapple with and it doesn't, there are no right or wrong answers. It kind of depends on where you kind of fall on the ethical spectrum. Yeah. And I, I mean, I wrote down like, can you have special laws for hmm. treason? And right. yet, like, can't, like, and again, that treason is another word that we in modern society have used mm. to where it no longer has any meaning. Like, Definitely. I always have to teach my kids. I'm like, and so my students, I'm like, when the guy tried to assassinate this, whatever leader it was, mm. that's treason. An mm. attempt to assassinate a public leader, <laughs> that's treason. Literally. Talking bad yeah. about the public leader yeah. is not treason. That's not treason. That's oh, just gosh. talking. Get oh, out my goodness. Of, oh my gosh. Yeah. But, but, out, but you understand because mm. because the people who are it it's the whole idea of mm. you cannot the in the corrupt society that we mm. you know the corrupt um dollar obsessed society that we live in, yeah, you can't get ahead by playing by the rules because no one else no. is. And that's, that's and it. that's where Von Volt is. Like mm. he can't get ahead of this thing by playing by the rules that he that he wants to because that's exactly. his whole like you know that's his that's that's, that's his, his job. But the problem yeah, is yeah. no one else is playing by the rules anymore. No. And so can't and it's so hard because we want him to make the exception, but get him like get yeah, him. Yeah. But at the same but time, we don't. It's tragic when he does. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah. Because we Cause don't violate his, his principles. Exactly. And so it's. I was torn. I was torn mm. the whole book because I mm. also want Claver on a spit roasting over a fire, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's, 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 you know, it's, it's a theme that's explored. I mean, even the, you know, for the Jedi, for example, you yeah. know, these sort of uh, galactic peacekeepers with ultimate power to kind of enforce the law, but, and, and they have these, you know, the morals and it kind of all falls apart in, in, Revenge of the Sith, you know, when Anakin turns to the dark side and then mm. sort of Obi Wan is like, you know, what happened? This is, this is a republic. This is a democracy. You can't just, you know, we don't. It's not the way we do things. And in many ways, justices are like Jedi, which it was never a kind of conscious choice of mine. But now that I think about it, it's probably quite an apt um, comparison. But I think, um, and the other thing I kind of examined in, in book two again is a huge spoiler is um, is when we find out that um, Von Vault uh, murdered Bressinger's wife's killer um early early on in his sort of career yeah and um he sort of says you know i, I this i this the theme i've been exploring is is von volt this kind of um stickler for the rules is he this kind of paragon of virtue um or or is it that he has always been this way to a greater or lesser extent um but helena is now kind of as she gets older and she spends more time with him she's kind of realizing and her naivety kind of falls away and mm. i think it ends up making her more um her more rigid and sort of stratified in her application and her worldview. She's because because she hates what it does to Von Volt, this kind of man who is always this kind of bastion of propriety. Yeah, um, it, and, it, because she always like he's like he's like you. I am not the person. And Bresinger says too, I'm not as good as you have always thought me to be. Like yeah. like from the beginning, you have mm. had the wrong like. Yes, exactly. You have that. put me up here. On a pedestal, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I've never, and and I've I've never, never been, been there. I've never been that guy. Yeah, but think exactly. of the pressure that puts on Von Vault to, like, mm. be perfect in this yeah, person's yeah. eyes who doesn't believe he can do any wrong. Exactly. And also doing it all well, very ill as well. Because oh, my gosh. A... Which is a great transition to this mm. book delves into mm. kind of the afterlife mm. way more than, like, I thought it was going to and way more than the yeah. first book. Yeah, the yeah. Mufrab, mm. that is, I see it in my dreams. It's so <laughs> terrifying. Huh? It's just inexorable, like plotting mm. towards forever. Like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's it. It was that. Do you ever see that movie? It follows. Yes, that's what it is. It's what it's that. It's that. It's that kind of curse that, that slowly but forever follows you, and until it catches up with you, of course. Yeah. And I. Watch. I don't like horror movies because I get very frightened. Yeah. Um, I don't. I can watch. I don't enjoy watching it, but I I can watch any movies about like serial killers or murders or whatever. And same. Like, whatever. Same. Supernatural stuff. Freaks really, me out. really spooks me out, and I don't like it at all. Um, I still. Ha I, I'm desperate to watch Hereditary, but I don't dare. 
Um, and morbid curiosity compelled me to watch It Follows because I thought it's such a good concept. I have to watch it, even though I know it's going to frighten me. Um, and I did, and it was very, very good. It's a great movie. Have you um, watched that movie Smile, which is similar? No, I haven't. Uh, it's What's it's a one? relatively new movie that's similar to that. Like it right. infests people near you, and they always get this huge, like, bizarre Ooh. smile before they like kill you or oh, okay. oh, no, no, no. No, it's not for me um which me is weird because <laughs> i haven't <laughs> watched it because it's terrifying just the trailers it... yeah well and but the thing is i you know i will happily write frightening things into my books but i don't know why but anyway uh yeah and even book three is, is even more actually um loads more afterlife stuff um coming as well well we've, because... we've still got to figure out what um well, what's her name? Augusta? What's her? What's her name? Uh, just as August. Yeah, yeah. yeah just as August is is. She's back. Yeah, she's still this hanging is, out. You better put world. a spoiler tag on this, by the way, because this just is ruining everything. Oh, it's one hundred percent spoiler. If <laughs> like if they're watching it after we've said it like four times, uh, it's their fault. It's not, it's not yeah, mine. I hope people just skip ahead to this bit. Yeah, so the, just as August is still alive, she's sort of loitering in the afterlife, so she isn't dead. Um, I mean, she's al alive. Alive in a sort of suspended animation. Yeah, yeah. so that's a, obviously another big reveal. Um, and she is working with agents within the afterlife to try and... So another concept I like, which I'm exploring in the Empire of the Wolf trilogy, is this idea of the butterfly effect and um, and how we can affect the kind of, you know, what I call the temporal pathway. You know, if, mm -hmm. if time is flowing, what can we do to kind of dam it or divert the streams? Um, and how kind of small actions affect things further down the line. And um, so August is working with a sort of cabal of um, entities within the afterlife to try and guide this pathway because they recognize that the sort of things that are happening with Claver and his kind of demonic patronage that he's kind of managed to acquire have catastrophic consequences, you know, for the, the world. Yeah. Um, and so they're trying to sort of guide it, but in a way that's not like you need to go here because as soon as you start telling people concrete things, then you're opening up, you know, lots of different things can happen. Like you're co you're confusing the picture and complicating it. You know, people start to second guess themselves. So yeah. they're trying to steer it in sort of subtle ways. Um, and the Mufrab is, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's just a creepy, weird thing. I'm assuming in book three we're going to see more from the trickster who we who has been in the first one and in yep. this one, but hasn't Correct. really done anything. He's just kind of lurking. Yeah, no, he's in the, he's in book three as well. Yeah. Definitely, okay. he plays a much bigger part in that, um, for sure. Um, he's, as I say, he's this sort of eminence grease. So he's kind of in the background trying to manipulate events. Um, gotcha. Uh, book three hasn't been edited yet, so it, maybe yeah. some of the afterlife stuff won't survive. But the um, the, the, the powers, like it, the 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 like climax of this book. Well, first, mm. well, first of all, first of all, first mm. of all, I knew something was wrong. I knew something was wrong when that dude, when the dude who got like pinched for kidnapping, for killing the, killing the, the prince, right? When oh yeah, Godric, pinched, yeah. I knew there was something wrong with that guy. Yes. But yeah. I, could, but you got me. I couldn't, I, did, I couldn't figure out what it was. Um, I got you. But I definitely knew, I'm like, Good. that guy definitely did not do it. No, but, that's but, right. It's but why? It's, it's, it's a difficult one. Again, it's much like so many, so many things with writing, especially a book as sort of complex as this. It's, um, not necessarily complex, but a lot of moving parts, which all have to kind of coalesce at the end. Mm -hmm. um, it's I the thing I always struggle with is how much information do you release to the reader? Yes. You know, how many kind of breadcrumbs do you lead uh, leave? Um, you know, how subtle can you make it, or how obvious you need to make it? And and you know, it's a difficult. Um, it's a very difficult line to tread, and some people will complain you know i've seen some reviews that are like oh it was all way too obvious you know one of the worst parts of the book was i knew immediately what happened um, no. and some people will say i was completely blindsided by this avalanche of you know revelations at the end and um and so that probably tells me that i've got the balance right because mm. um you know you don't want you don't want everyone to not know what's going on yeah. um and you don't i'm similarly you don't want everyone to guess the kind of so that I, I i laid a few breadcrumbs like there's a bit i think when um heinrich the dog he sort of sniffs and he wants to go back to the he wants to go back to the palace yeah and um and they're like i oh, don't you know and they all think oh he just wants to go home he's bored of this and actually he could smell the prince he was in the palace the whole time you know and so little kind of clues like that which some people will kind of get some people won't um, have you seen have you seen saw saw 2 have you seen any yeah, of the saw many movies? years ago yeah yeah yeah, yeah. where where the them, the guy the guy's uh 
um, I'm about to spoil Saw 2 for y'all guys, um, where, where the guy's son is in the safe in the police station the entire time. Yeah. And yeah. it's all a recording, isn't it? The whole thing yeah. has already happened. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, yeah. yeah. that's what I was thinking of twist. when that was revealed. Yes. I was like, he was, he was in the safe the whole time. But the thing yeah. is, so I knew I knew enough to know something was wrong, mm. but there there wasn't enough for me to figure out I didn't what, think you could what it was. Yeah, I, I you would have to be very prescient, I think, to well, I think I kind of planted the seed that Ileana of Casimir was kind of a bit off. Um but I think if you kind of and the, the Kavoskin man, this is a very subtle one, but um I gave all the Casimir and um, green eyes. So mm -hmm. the guy who runs away from Von Volt and gets and smushed gets by smushed. the gates. Yeah. He's got a green he's got green eyes. So um if you kind of pick up the those uh -huh. are very subtle. So you know, you think, that. Oh, he's a Kavoskin, so he is obviously linked to Liana. So there are there's enough little bits in there that if you're paying very, very close attention, you can kind of work it all out. But I don't think when you go onto Godric's cog and they kind of he's obviously a bit nuts. Um yeah. I think you'd have to be thinking quite cleverly well, to kind of piece it all together. Remember that also that some of those people who are like, oh, I knew it from the beginning didn't. They're just saying that. Like oh, that, definitely. Yeah, 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 for sure. That's always for sure. people watching. <laughs> oh, I, I knew it from the... No, you freaking didn't. Like, you didn't. <laughs> I know, you did, yeah. <laughs> no, I know, I know. I don't... I, and I wanted, you know, if people get it, that's great. Uh, what I wanted to do with this book is... Um, and I, I've seen this in reviews as well, which is which is great. Is people are like, you know, the last hundred pages, I, I read the whole thing in one sitting. Like, the last hundred, but it's just bam, 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 bam. You know, it's just everything just kind of slots into place, kind of like the tumblers of a lock. Just and watching Clavers use use the the abilities, and mm. then uh, Helena burning the books was one of my favorite. Like. Yeah. Like it was genius. Like, yeah, yeah. like it's it's something that you don't think of, like as a solution. Mm. Exactly like what you're talking about. What if we just shot yeah. the guy? Like, what if yeah. we just got rid of Claver's ability to use these yeah. by destroying exactly. them? Yeah, yeah, right. And I think I wanted to give the um, I wanted to give them a win as well. Like, I didn't want it to be like we've lost every, you know, we've yeah. lost every last thing. I wanted to give them some, like, they have a bit of initiative and think. Yeah, you're right. Well, let's just let's burn him. You know, let's if he can't, he can't use any of it. He doesn't have it. It doesn't exist yeah. anymore. Um, and so I, I didn't want it to be all because I, and otherwise I thought as well, you know, just from a narrative perspective, if I didn't burn them, then Claver would just he would become impossible to kind of kill eventually. You know, um, he would become too powerful. So I had to do something to kind of nix his power a little bit. Um, and so there are bits and pieces you because sometimes you get things like. Um, Game of Thrones, for example, and the you know, death of Oberyn Martell. And uh, that was the first time I was actually a bit angry um, watching Game of Thrones. Be because, he, because he had won. He like he beats right. the freaking mountain and then it just felt it felt cheap. Right. And it, it, it was just it's like, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and I and I just thought, oh, you know, come on, like it's stuff that the, the, the mirror when you have like the heroes always surviving. And when you have the heroes always losing, those things are both as boring as one another. You yeah, have to you. have a mixture of the two. Mm -hmm. And so with book two, I didn't want it all to be like, we've just lost every single thing we've done. Like I wanted them to have some successes sort of yeah. come out of it. And that was, and that was, and the page, take the pages out of the, the codex rather than giving the whole thing. For yes. I, like I messaged you when it happened. I was yes, like, yeah. <laughs> thank you for having her not hand him the, but because we've all seen that, like, no, you've got to give yeah. the thing. Like yeah, yeah. first give me the lamp or whatever. Yeah. Then, <laughs> exactly that. And then yeah. you're immediately screwed over. Mm. And yeah, yeah. I said, thank you for doing that. And then I was worried mm. because like later on, he's like, oh mm. no. I'm like, did I just thank Richard for not doing something that I hate? And then she's going to do it anyway. And I'm like, no, yeah, <laughs> but then yeah, ripping the pages yeah. out. It's so mm. it was so unexpected. Just the demons mm. pouring out. And yeah, yeah. Like Claver, like Claver being backed up into the corner, like being like, you're going to freaking die. Yeah. <laughs> We're all going to be killed if you don't it give was, me the book. Oh, it was so good. And then, you know, and that it felt Bresinger dying felt like a, natural extension of like how are we going to escape all this you know yeah yeah so i knew he had to go um and uh it was so i was you know i was really upset actually killing him and i felt like it was a poignant uh scene or many other people who read it they are they are all yeah upset. yeah and i think some people get you know very a lot of people have Bressinger as their favorite character so 
people will probably not read book three after I did that, but it wasn't like a kind of I need to kill someone to keep the stakes up. It it felt like it, and 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 also it's not like a bat. You know, I like the idea of resting in it. I'm just kind of laying him to rest now. Like you've done enough. Go and see your wife and children again. You know, as as yeah. a character, you know, you are released from the the stress of the narrative. And we, and, we did, and he doesn't go back. There's no kind of you know afterlife you know, magic with resting. Like I I thought, let's just leave the guy alone. Well, Von um, Volk's my favorite. So, hmm. I like, yeah. but but now now I like. The, the problem is they're all my favorite now, like, except the <laughs> yeah. emperor. The emperor can suck it. Like he's, he's a douchebag. Like, like he's useless. Like, like how? But then you, mm. how did? This is always the thought in history. Like mm. if he's so useless, but how did someone so useless mm. preside over the act? Like like the conquering the and creation of the, of the empire. Of course, yeah. And I think it's. I think what happens is over time. You know, you have this. You get older, you get comfortable, you get a bit indolent. Um, you know, your legions are kind of invincible, and it's it's all just a kind of, I guess, just a massive bureaucratic complacency, and you don't see the um, the sort of the problems mounting until they're actually basically insurmountable. I think by the time we're in book two, there's nothing the emperor can actually do that doesn't cause at least a partial collapse. There's no, there's no course of action. And then gets, he's paralyzed by indecision because, yeah. and he's hoping that Von Volk can just sort of swoop in and solve all his problems, which of course he can't. And he wouldn't even be able to, even if he wasn't completely obsessed with, with Claver. But um, yeah, it's, it, you're right. It's this kind of like, well, how did the, if he's so smart and he kind of united all these countries together, how is he such a, um, but of course, you know, the strategic genius has got to kind of kick the breakers somewhere, doesn't it? And I think, um, yeah. It's just kind of reached the end of his useful, you know, life. Yeah. Um, and, and I mean, you make it pretty clear that, like, one of the main things bleeding him dry is he won't, like, let the frontier go. Mm, exactly. Like, he, yeah. he, he's pouring way too much human and economic Full capital zero. into... Yeah, yeah. It's 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 become it's like it's a conquest that's almost like too big to fail, yeah. and it's sort of gone completely all in on it, and all that's happened. He doesn't is... understand sunk cost clearly. This is some cost fallacy, isn't it? Um, and if he had pulled back from the cover, but the and the problem is, of course, is that the longer he stays there, the more the coven Kovoskins and the you know the Kova Confederation they they build up on the husband air forces as well. So if you do retreat, they can counterattack. So this is just this desperate stalemate, and he can't yeah do anything while that exists. And I'm assuming we'll see more about we'll see more about what happened to his son's legion in the north. Cause all we know is like, they've been. And, yep. and that's, that's the it. first quarter of book three. Yes. Find out what's going on there. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, like, yeah. how, you know, yeah. we, well, I got well, how indeed. Well, <laughs> I know. I got know. <laughs> it's a great question. Oh, and um, the, freaking, the freaking, the, the queen, like screw her. Like, yeah. What? Yeah. Like what's her She's... problem? Well, I mean, I get it, but still. Well, you know what her problem is, yeah. But um, I think you know, with Liana and the sort of the Casimir, I had a lot. So originally, I had a longer storyline involving them, um, and there was a. So what was originally the storyline for for book two um, was a. It was a sham trial. So there was another. So that one of the main storylines of book two was this um, trial of a bunch of kind of Kavoskan rebels, and it mm -hmm. was all. Um, and Ileana of Casimir was basically working with a bunch of people in the background to kind of, so rather than having, so the whole point of Godric, they plant a bunch of false memories in his head. He confesses to the crime of the kidnapping. They execute him. Oh, hey, presto, actually, there was no crime at all. You've just executed a completely innocent man. Um, and so you eviscerate the credibility of the magistratum in, in yeah. fell swoop. Um, and the, originally that, that, outcome was going to be achieved by a show trial of gotcha. Kavoskan rebels who it turned out had nothing to do with it but were all executed for that and so there was a lot more kind of Kavoskan but it, the narrative got very very complicated very very quickly and I and I remember I ended up deleting about seven or eight thousand words of that storyline oh. and I know which is for some people that's nothing but for me that's massive because I I draft chronologically yeah and my first draft is we're pretty much there you know that's mm there's some editing obviously but, but so i 7000 words is tough for me but um i had to get it all out it wasn't working and, and i changed it all up so originally there was some more stuff there but um i think there's more in 
book three about the Kavoskans as well, but it's all to do with like, you know, the independence of Kavosk and the black powder and the removal of the legions and basically Clavus saying that he will help them get rid of the legions along the cover and let them be. He's only interested in the empire. So they kind of throw their lot in with him. Yeah, so this is kind of why would about. anyone believe Claver? He's the worst. Know. He is the worst, isn't he? He's a real asshole. I've hated him since chapter one of the first book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, it starts to get weird, you know, in in book three as well. He's he becomes very powerful, and um, strange stuff happens, um, oh especially God. in the land of the in the land of the Wolfmen. Um, there's some there's some really trippy stuff goes on there. So, so what can we ex without you know, like heavy spoilers. What can we expect mm. in book three? Is there a mystery like in the first two? Not as much. So okay. there's not a um there's not an investigation in book three. So book three is there's a sorry, there's a couple of mysteries. So there's the, the resolution to the missing sixteenth mm -hmm. legion. Um that's the first kind of bit. They go to the um the land of the wolf men um and we spend about five five or six chapters down there. Um, so Von Bolt is kind of trying to husband allies, you know, yeah. to sort of for the big showdown. Um, and the mystery in there is a mystery, but it's not an investigative mystery. It's a sort of supernatural mystery um, okay. in book three. So uh, sort of spooky goings on. Ugh. Helena starts to get subject to some quite frightening bits and pieces, and um, this yeah sort of afterlife shenanigans happening. And then of course it being book three the big battle um you know so that's about as much as i can probably yeah, say without that's fine. Uh, and, uh, and of course a trial a big trial i thought i've got to just end on a trial because um that's the whole point of the series and if you don't like it i don't care uh, yeah they can <laughs> they can deal with it someone yeah. someone Go and read a hundred other fantasy books that don't have trials seriously in. someone <laughs> i knew read it and was like hey, it was, it's fine it was just fantasy law and order i'm like yes why yes, it's fantasy law and order <laughs> i don't understand you why are like, you framing that like it's a bad thing i know <laughs> the jack mccoy part's the best part exactly that so, um i, used to, I love I the think, trial you know, in, in the first one thank you well, there's another, and it's, this one is much more of a kind of actual cross-examination kind of trial and i thought you know i'm gonna end on that because thematically it's in keeping with the series but also you know that's the whole point isn't it of of the empire of the wolf they are effectively traveling lawyers and i think it would be remiss to just have you know bath fight and then that that'd be the end of it and i was getting rid of there's thousands of other fancy novels that are just about yes. you know, bad guys fighting let's let's have a, something a bit more cerebral so that's there is awesome. a big trial. i'm oh, i'm so excited for book three now like yeah i think it's i think it's good i like it i really like it i like where it's come out it's with more meditations on the first uh, there's, there's a prologue in there which I really like, and it's um, it's about the it's about the importance of procedural, the, the importance of the process, um, and it frames nicely what comes later in the novel. Um, it's called "To Be Hanged on a Summer's Morning." Um, it's it's a cool chapter. I do. I, really, I was going to do it as a short story, but I decided to make it the prologue of book three that's instead. Cool. Yeah, so and, that's, um, that's a nice little. The next book will be out about the same time next year, you think? February 2024. Yeah, yeah. They're all going to be a year apart. Um, everything, you know, I think they will release a Once the cover is done and the title, you know, they'll release it all fairly soon to kind of keep the groundswell of readership, you know, going. Because got to hit that, got to hit that critical kind of tipping point, you know, of, yeah. of sales for it to kind of just start yeah. running away but we'll see what happens and um, for those who have not yet if, if you're still here yeah we've spoiled the book for you but whatever yeah, read it anyway <laughs> um if you're not aware there's a freaking synopsis of book one on yes your website there is yeah a pretty detailed one it should be standard like mm -hmm. with a year between books like no, no, that no. should be the standard is producing some kind of like like some kind of like the story so far because yeah. like, I especially know, people like you everything. you read like literally 100 god knows how many books you read a year but i only read like 12 books so i'm yeah. you know i read about a book a month i'm a very slow reader um so i'm okay but i the reason i did it was because i i picked up jade war and i hadn't read jade city for about three years um and i was like i need a primer but i don't want to read jade city i love jade city but i don't want to read it again 
Um, and someone pointed me in the direction of a synopsis for, for Jade City, and I thought, well, that's a brilliant idea. So There's a synopsis for Jade City? Somewhere. I can find it for you if you like. Because I'm, I'm I, like, I literally have the audiobook ready to go because I don't okay. remember Jade City. I'll send it to you. <sighs> Did you read it's Jade really Legacy? Not yet. I'm going to, but I haven't read it yet. Because I'm like my friend, uh, I have a friend who wants me to finish that series this year, but I read Jade City in t October right. of 2020. So it's yeah. been a long time. But yeah. Jade Legacy is apparently um, like I'm so I'm so tired of hearing about how good it is. I'm so tired of hearing it. Like <laughs> Jade City was one of the best. It was so fresh and unique. It and was very different. Yeah, I ripped through Jade City. I loved that book. I thought it was excellent. How was Jade War? Is it good? It was good. Yeah, yeah. It's it's more. Um, it's uh, it's a slight. It's a broad. It's again. It's a broadening of the scope. Um, gotcha. And it's a kind of uh, um, examining kind of more peripheral. Aspect Takes us of outside that. of Jan Loon. Exactly that. Gotcha. We go to sort of, uh, back to Espinia. Espinia, I think, is the kind of what I imagine is basically the United States. Yeah. Um, and uh, and a couple of other. There's a bit in it where I really thought they were. She was going to. Um, if I had written, <laughs> this is a brilliant book. They're, they're all great books. If I had written Jade Ward, do you know the movie Clear and Present Danger? Yes. Yeah. The Tom Clancy novel. You know the bit where they get the F-18 to bomb all of the Mexican drug laws yeah. and make it look like it, look, it was a car bomb? Yeah. I thought she was basically going to get the fam the, the the family on Jan Loon to get an a speed to get the Espinians to bomb these like rival cartels on nice. like another island. But she didn't. She did something else. And it was all it was all very great. But I was like, oh please do clear and present danger. That'd be amazing. So good. Um, but anyway, she didn't. But it was all good, very good. It's, it's they're all good. Yeah, she's she's a great writer and I, I respect her greatly. Nice. Um, what are you what are you reading now? Like, do you read do you read it seems like you read a whole bunch of like nonfiction books about Dude. like logistics and, yep. and island hopping in the Pacific in the Second World War. <laughs> Um, I am currently, I just finished The Hand of the Sun King by J.T. Oh, right Whitehouse, which is an excellent book. I really, really enjoyed that. Um, if you haven't read it, it is a sort of um, East Asian fantasy. Mm. It's a little bit like Justice of Kings, actually. It's a kind of like coming of age, you know, a guy being mentored into, yeah. into magic in the Im Imperial Society. So that was excellent. And I've just finished that. So I'm about to start uh, The Combat Codes. Um, oh, yeah, right on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I've got a I've got an arc of that, and uh, I read the first three pages last night before I went to sleep. Um, so oh, I'm get before I pass out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've got two small children, so I was like, oh Christ. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's that's all my you know. And then I've still got a few like I've got a book about the French and Indian War, which I'm reading called Crucible of War, which is fantastic. I've got a book about George and London I'm reading, and I've got a few books about like Dam Busters or something, a Second World War stuff i always like to have a second world awesome. war book on the back burner just because okay. i really enjoy it i always have greek and roman like the landmark yeah. thucydides or xenophon <laughs> like yeah. always like that's just right the one two pages at a time herodotus what's his name um herodotus uh, is a history guy. herodotus yeah, yeah yeah who who thinks who thinks that alexander faced a million persians uh at the sure freaking no. Well, I guess it's not Herodotus, but like Arian yeah. says there's a million Persians at Galgamela. Mm. How? How do you how do you that probably went a million men in Persia? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, how do you yeah. logistically take care of an army of yeah. a million people like back then? It's silly. It's silly. He had a hundred and something thousand Arian. Mm. Mm. <laughs> a million. But Herodotus this does say that over a million Persians came um through to Thermopylae, so yeah, you know, Herodotus. It wasn't that many, bud. Under Zer no, Xerxes was it? Yeah, Xerxes. Oh, Xerxes. It was Xerxes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So I need to read more on that. You should send me some book recommendations. Uh, I de I have many. I definitely will. I bet you do. I yeah, definitely do. will. Anyway, Richard, this has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for talking to me again. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks, Alan. I always enjoy talking to you. Everyone should go buy this book. Even if you read mm. the arc, you should go do like what I do and go buy it. In fact, if this is coming out before the 14th, which it is, mm. go pre-order it. Yes. Because I'm sure Orbit loves to see pre-orders. They do. It, they really do. It yeah. all helps. So go mm. pre-order this beast. Um, mm. If you're lucky enough to be on one of those, um, was it Goldsboro or whatever? Like, Yeah, they sold out. 
immediately. Man, man. That, they labeled yeah. they labeled it with seven hundred and fifty. They should have gone a thousand. They should have gone they, a thousand. They, they, were, they were worried it. about the pull through. They didn't think they'd get the pull through, but really. Well, then the third one, you know, they'll have a thousand for the third one. Then do you think they'll go back up again? I if I didn't, yeah, I don't know. I, I think know. I mean if if the if the seven fifty sold out like all, like almost right away, mm. sure, like there'll be enough. You're there's right. enough. There's enough buzz. There's enough buzz, especially with the ending of this book. Like there's mm. enough buzz. we're gonna get it. We're gonna get it. All right. So y'all go buy it. Go pre-order it and go <laughs> buy that crap. And uh, you know because that'll let Orbit know that we want to see the Flintlock series. You want to see the Flintlock series, the yes. Glass Saber. Mm. That's what it's called, the Glass Saber series. Yeah. Uh, well, the first book is called the Glass Saber. I don't know. Glass... Guys, we want to see the Glass Saber. Mm. If, if we don't see it, I'm coming for everybody. So y'all need to go order it. I want to um, write it. It's gonna be awesome. Um, thank you again so much, Richard. Um, I'm gonna take us off live here, and um, yeah, guys, go buy, go follow. Where can people find you, Richard? Twitter, Instagram. It's just Richard. and it's just your name. Like it's not, it's it's not some weird yeah. thing. It's not like King of Stova nope. or something. Okay. No, no, it's just Richard S. Swan. Richard underscore S underscore Swan. All right, y'all go find him on Twitter and Instagram. All right, here we go. Ending broadcast.